Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics Behind the Scenes. Uh, this is a few of my garage where I try to do most of my experiments. Unfortunately, the tractor has to be in the garage because you can see by the frost on the windows that it's like freezing. It's like, like 10 degrees outside, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And the problem with the tractor isn't a problem really with the tractor, it's a problem with the battery in the tractor. And it doesn't start unless the battery is above 30 degrees. The battery is getting old and needs to be replaced, but I'm not going to do that till summertime because these batteries are expensive. And I cannot, uh, I have a 300 foot driveway and without the plow on the tractor, um, especially with the snow we just had, which was about uh, one foot, but drifting up to three foot drifts. Um, you know, so I have to have the tractor in the garage. Unfortunately, what that does is it limits my space of what I can do. Oh, there goes the supervisor. He just sk skedaddled underneath. So I'm trying to do little bits of work in here, even with uh, this cramped space for this stupid tractor. Uh, this is one of the coils I've purchased because we're working on this book here. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Well, anyway, this is the design structure operating of electromagnetics for tracting copper aluminum. Uh, what, now, I have it hooked up to a source, and I got a couple of target uh, washers out here. Um, it doesn't work because I do not have a big iron core. Okay, I know that I can get this to work without an iron core, but I can't do it at 60 hertz. So uh, this experiment I'm putting on hold because I've got to get a, a higher power, higher frequency source. I think I'm going to make one from the frequency generator back here and an old stereo amplifier. The only problem is I just don't have the, the space out here to get anything done because good old tractor is just sucking up all my extra space. And the other thing is I got ongoing projects like here's my tile saw which is out taking up space because I'm halfway through a tiling job. Uh, what I have I've been doing trying to reduce, there's the supervisor sneaking, lurking away, is I've made wheelie pallets. I don't know if you can see where I've got, you know, moving boxes all squared up on these wheelie pallets. It's hard to see. Here's an idea of a wheelie pallet here. Here's all the tiling material it is on a pallet that I put wheels on. Because I have a forklift attachment for the tractor, and when it gets a little bit warmer, or, you know, when I can dare to take the plow off, I'm going to put the forklift on and take these big, these are, these big pallets here, there's two big pallets here that are filled with boxes and covered in plastic. Those are items I deemed I don't need in the house, and I'm putting them on pallets to get rid of them. I'm going to go put them out in the shed, where I don't care what happens to them out there, and I'll deal with them at a later time. Maybe, you know, after Ethereal Mechanics is, you know, much better along, I'll get online and get all this stuff sold or take it to the dump. I don't know. I'll make those decisions later. So, once I get these out of there, and we, get the tra we can get the tractor outside when it's warmer. Uh, it'll free up all the space, because one thing that's blocked is all of my tools for building stuff are pretty much landlocked in. Uh, and there's so many things I need to work on, but I am just totally, because of the cold weather, uh, bamboozled here. So, I mean, here's my tiling job right here. Uh, it's not finished. I got the tiling down most of it. I still need to do little, little edge pieces there. And the purpose of this tiling is to cut down the moisture that comes through the cement floor. And uh, I tried to do this over the Thanksgiving break, but uh, that's when Transvariance hit and I had to get that done. And I, so we had some, over the Christmas break, we had some days of 30 and 40 degree, or 40 and 50 degree weather. And so I got done what I could have got done then instead of working on Ethereal Mechanics. So what I need to do is get this area here, get all kinds of shelves. It's hard to see, there's a, there's a, there's a hoist right here, but all this area is just like wasted space. And I want to put all kinds of shelves in here so I get everything out of the house as much as possible. And if we go inside, you can see my whole place is a whole bunch of crap all over the place because I'm in different states of putting stuff away. Um, right here is a whole big box of all kinds of polarizers, circular polarizers, um, sheets, uh, camera attachments, all kinds of stuff because we're going to do some experiments in polarizing, which I'm about to show you one. Let's go downstairs. Again, more stuff all over the place because I'm in the middle of uh, home improvement projects. One of them is I'm organizing all the electronic parts, going through the ones, getting rid of stuff. I just got stuff I've been collecting for like 30, 40 years. And some of this stuff just doesn't need to be wasting my space. But what's cool is up here, I got a lot of old bipolar transistors. 
And you say, well, what good are old bipolar transistors? Well, what's good about old bipolar transistors is that back in the old days, they would actually publish you the geometry of those transistors. And so if you have a different theory of, of electromagnetism, you can actually apply those new theories of electromagnetism to the different types and see if you can explain how the semiconductor physics works. Right now they do a lot of quantum mechanics stuff. It gives them the right answers, but it also told them, you know, 10 years ago that the up theoretical upper limit of silicon was 1.4 gigahertz or something like that, and they found out that that was wrong. So there's some room for improvement. Okay, but now this project of trying to use ethereal mechanics to uh, model transistors, that's going to be something that's going to be make a year, year and a half off because we got a lot better things, intermediate things to do right now. Okay, again, I'm organizing and sorting stuff. That's why there's crap all over the place. I'm also putting in a gym, sort of a gym, because I got to get my sorry ass into shape because I've de determined that the reason why I'm getting slow at stuff is because I'm overweight and I'm tired and I need to get my ass back into shape. Over here you can see that uh, we're gearing up to do the green screen to take the Barship Enterprise uh, to the distant parts of the galaxy, me and my co-pilot here. And so this is my first real like screen test of this. I'm going to try to do something with it right now. So this is the first time I've set it up. Uh, it's pretty cool. This entire setup of the two lights and, this, and the, the racks or the stands and the, and the green screen all come in one kit. It's pretty nice. I think I have to figure out how to get the creases out of it, but ultimately um, where we're going with that is again to take the starship or the Barship Enterprise to journeys to distant worlds and black holes and the formation of galaxies. So that's, I'm gearing up for that as well. Uh, here is the experiment I'm going to show you right now. I have some polarizers. The main reason for all the polarizers was the paradox that was shown, and it's not really coming through the camera that well. There you go, it's kind of can see it. Is that here we have the dark area is two linear polarizers at 90 degree angles. And so where they overlap, you see nothing. Between those two polarizers is another one at about 45 degree angle. And it lets the background light through. They can't explain that with normal physics, and the quantum mechanical explanation that I saw was complete gibberish. I'm going to show you how that is explained with new electromagnetism slash ethereal mechanics. But the cool thing about this is it led me to an answer for something I've needed for years, which is a way to prove that light reflects off a mirror as a negative image. What you see here is a pair of glasses like you would get from a 3D movie. One lens is right-hand circularly polarized, the other end is left-hand circularly polarized. And then what you see in the mirror is the image below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this polarizer for the camera and I have to put it on backwards because they actually inserted it into the frame backwards and so it won't stick on the camera normally otherwise I'd just put it on from the beginning. And so and there you have it my friends. The mirror light reflecting off a mirror reflects as a negative image. There's the proof. Now you might say, well, yeah, the theorists and engineers, and they knew that radio waves reflect as a negative image off conductors. We know that. The problem is it's all inference from mathematics. There's no direct observation. It's all inferred. Indu new induction says it should occur too, but what I've been looking for is a simple way to show it to the average guy. Plain as day, very simple. Simple, don't need to know math. You can just see that where the straight on coming through light through one lens reflected in the mirror is inverted. And so what you have is one lens, it might be right hand circular polarized, but when it reflects off the mirror, it gets flipped to the other pole. And therefore, only one will make it through the polarizer I'm holding in front of the camera right now. Okay, that right there is enough corroborating evidence for me to say new induction is in fact light. It's light, it's inertia, and it's part of the answer for gravity. It's part, it's part of it. Okay, so this is like a great, uh, this is, I've been waiting for an experiment like this for years and I could never figure out how to do it until I started playing around polarizers. I was like, ah, oh, this is stupid. The circular polaroid light, if it reflects as a negative, it should reflect as the, as the opposite. So if, it, if it's right hand and it hits the mirror, it's going to turn into left hand. It's going to turn into a negative image of itself. And there you go. 
And so what else is in the works? Well, I also purchased a light meter because what we're going to do with this experiment is I'm going to build a box with the light meter underneath and I'm going to build it so I can rotate all these filters at all different angles so we can get direct measurements of this phenomenon so that we can get um, experimental corroboration with theorem mechanics. It won't just be what they do in quantum mechanics, which is kind of a back of the napkin kind of thing. This will be something that you can take to the bank. The other thing that's going on, another great revelation, Holt and Arp. I was recently made aware of this book. I just purchased it. You can see I started reading it. Uh, very good. I'd maybe do some readings online for people. Uh, this is very important because it says what I've been saying in ethereal mechanics, that the redshift, there's other ways you're going to get redshift. Okay, and my knowledge is I don't know all the things that scientists see in the sky, but now I'm going to get a good education on what they see because there are other ways you can get redshifts according to ethereal mechanics. And I want to see if there's more ways to get redshifts that I'm not aware of, and they'll help me improve ethereal mechanics even further, make it, to make it line up and match science, or the, the observed phenomena. That's the important thing. Um, okay, I know I have a lot of stuff I owe. I know that I need videos for the uh, Patreons of the Transvariance paper. Uh, I'm going to put those on hold because we have a lot of, of rabbit holes to jump down right now, which are very good. And as long as I'm making forward progress, I'll come back to the videos when I have no forward progress to report. Okay, so I'm making a lot of progress here. It's going to be about another week or two before I get another video out to get all this crap cleaned up and get everything or organized and put away. Um, for those people that the transvariance paper is going to repl it replaces special relativity, the new gravity paper, which I'm, I have just started, is going to replace general relativity. The transvariance paper is now free to everybody. If you go to the Patreon site and look, as uh, search for keyword transvariance, look for the version 1.2. That's the latest version. There's still one more typo, I'm told. I got to go, you know, fix that. So anyhow, oh, you want to see something interesting. Watch this. When I turn the polarizer backwards. <laughs> Very interesting. These polarizers only work one way. Very interesting stuff. I know how, why it only works one way. Let's see if you can figure out why it only works one way. Anyway, uh, thanks. Thanks for the patience for all my Patreon members. Oh, there's a ceiling tile. I've been doing work up there, too. All kinds of crap going on in parallel here. I want to thanks for the patience of my Patreon folks. And for those folks, because I'm putting this out to YouTube, to my YouTube followers, you know, um, I want to be able to do this full time. Uh, if not, I'm going to keep doing it as, as fast as I can do it, humanly possible do it. But I'm right now at my physical limit of speed. And I think what I'm going to do with, now that we're making money with the Patreon folks is get people to take care of my yard in the summer and maybe get somebody to clean this place so I don't have to spend the time doing it and uh, you know so one of those things trying to find ways to save time by not having to do stupid work um, so any of this donations you can make on the Patreon side to help me offload other work that I don't need to be doing I really appreciate that and all of this stuff here were purchased using Patreon funds including the green screen setup back there I actually purchased two because once I get I think I need two to do the full Starship thing, and I probably need some other sheets, you know, to cover other areas and stuff, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you a lot. Take care.